сопротивление, вы обречены на смерть. Ваш единственный шанс выжить – это сложить оружие и On the 24th of February 2022, the same day Vladimir Putin launched his illegal invasion of Ukraine, without warning, Russian artillery began shelling the city center of Mariupol. 26 innocent people lost their lives. This savage act of terrorism was the beginning of the siege of Mariupol. The story of this battle is one of brutality, sacrifices and deep travesty. But it is also a story of heroism, hope and how a few thousand stubborn Ukrainian soldiers, despite all odds, defied the bulk of the Russian army for months. On the 25th, while the city was being shelled indiscriminately, Russian tanks and infantry encountered the first Ukrainian defenders in the small village of Pavlov. The small Ukrainian garrison was actually able to stop the Russian vanguard, destroying at least 22 tanks in the process. They would soon be overrun due to sheer numbers and the ferocity of the Russian advance. On the morning of the 27th, another Russian tank column rushing towards Mariupol was defeated. Six Russian soldiers were taken prisoner. On the 28th, the Russians completed their encirclement of the city. Despite being constantly shelled, the city remained fully in Ukrainian hands. Later that day, the Russians cut all electricity, gas and internet connection to the city. Then in the evening, a Ukrainian sniper killed a Russian major general. Over the next couple of days, both the siege and shelling of the city would intensify drastically. On the 2nd of March, the mayor of Mariupol, Vadim Boyshenko, would announce that his city was suffering from a water outage and had experienced massive civilian casualties. Later that day, Russian artillery deliberately targeted the most densely populated residential neighborhood of Mariupol, shelling it for more than 15 hours straight. The neighborhood was almost completely leveled by the Russians, costing several hundred civilians their lives. The Russians never even considered other methods. They went straight to just trying to bomb the city away from the map. Moreover, in many of these artillery strikes, the Russians would use cluster munitions as to try and cause the maximum amount of damage to the inhabitants. That is how much hate the Russian onslaught was filled with. The next day, a spokesman for the so-called DPR threatened that if the Ukrainians didn't surrender now, they would face what he called targeted strikes. He was basically saying, surrender now or we'll annihilate the entire city. Over the next week, the Russians would attempt to do exactly that. Day and night, Russian shells would rain down on the city every 10 minutes. Everywhere and everyone was a target. Only basements would offer some sort of relative safety from Vladimir Putin's bombs. During this week, many hundreds of Ukrainian civilians lost their lives in these bombardments. Who is our children? Who? 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 Many of them were completely buried beneath the rubble from ruined buildings. Others were laid to rest in mass graves, as Russian shelling had also destroyed the city graveyard. On March 9th, a Russian aircraft targeted and struck both a maternity ward and a children's hospital. I'm sure you have all seen these horrific images before. Then on March 13th, Russian forces entered the outskirts of Mariupol. What happened during the following days hadn't been seen on the continent for more than 80 years. Intense urban combat took place. Hundreds of soldiers on both sides were killed as the Russians advanced from one building to another. The brave Ukrainian defenders were making them pay dearly for every meter they took. The Ukrainians were completely outnumbered and outgunned from the very beginning of the battle, but they knew that perfectly well, so they decided to think smart. They would almost instantly switch over to guerrilla tactics. They would sneak up on the Russians in small groups, then open fire and eliminate the enemies, before retreating back to safe positions. The Russian assault on the city, however, was just so extremely massive and destructive that clashes would soon reach the city center. On the 16th, while heavy fighting was taking place, more than a thousand civilians, mostly women and children, had taken refuge in the old theater in central Mariupol. On both sides of the theater building, they had written the word children 
in Russian in large white letters. To make it perfectly clear, the Russian command knew exactly who was inside this building when they ordered the artillery to strike it. The theater was completely destroyed. More than 600 innocent people lost their lives. During the time of the fighting in central Mariupol, thousands of civilians began taking shelter from Vladimir Putin's bombs in the tunnels beneath the enormous Azovstal steel plant. On the 18th, the airport fell to the invaders, and on the 19th, fighting broke out between the Russians and soldiers from the Ukrainian Azov battalion defending Azovstal. For the next nine days, brutal street fighting would take place all over Mariupol. Thousands of casualties were reported both soldiers and civilians, the Russians losing many more than the Ukrainians. Then on the 28th, the mayor of Mariupol announced that most of the city was in the hands of the occupiers. This is also when the deportation started. Thousands of civilians in the occupied city were rounded up and deported to the Russian Far East against their will. The territory of Azovstal, which actually fills up almost a third of the entire city of Mariupol, was quickly becoming the only safe place for civilians in the city. Outside the walls, Vladimir Putin had unleashed not only the barbaric Chechens, but also the 64th Brigade, the Butchers of Butcher. They would unleash terror on the Ukrainian civilians. Many would end up in either mass graves or Vladimir Putin's mobile crematoriums. Hundreds, if not thousands of women were raped by the Russians. And on April 15th, only as of style remained Ukrainian. At this point, more than 95% of the entire city had been destroyed. During this time, many thousands of civilians had taken refuge in Azovstal, protected by a little more than 2,000 Ukrainian soldiers, mostly from the Azov Battalion and the Marine Corps. These heroes would risk their lives every day to defend their people and deny the invaders from fully gaining control over Mariupol. For the first few days, they would beat back savage Russian assaults on Azovstal causing significant enemy casualties. Then on April 21st, it seems that Vlad the Mad might have gotten worried over how many soldiers he was losing while trying to take the steel plant. He ordered his defense minister, Sergei Shoigo, to seal off Azovstal and lay siege, while also declaring a Russian victory in Mariupol. They are showing their cowardly face to the world right now, claiming that the Mariupol is taken. Mariupol is not taken. Uh, if somebody can ask, do we need help? Yes, of course we need help. But we do not need to be rescued. We can rescue others. And we are rescuing others. Thousands of people still, civilian people, still hiding in the basements and in the shelters on the, on, on the territory of Stal. Uh, they, they escaped from the city to find a cover here, uh, under the coverage, under the uh, protection of Ukrainian soldiers. Uh, and what they are receiving? The Russian indiscriminate fire. Despite the accusations of the Russian ministers, the Russian president, uh, that they took control over the city. Yes, uh, this statement was made today, but you know what, they do not control all the, all the city. We still control the areas of Stahl, it still works. And uh, we're still fighting. We destroyed one tank today, uh, two armored fighting vehicles and one armored personal carrier and um, the numbers of enemy losses are still increasing. The soldiers from the Azov Battalion and the Marine Corps would not sit down and wait though. Every day and night, they would sneak behind enemy lines and ambush the Russians. I want to show you a clip of exactly that. These are soldiers from the Azov Battalion. They are gonna ambush a Russian supply convoy deep behind the enemy lines.
this is something they would do on a daily basis. These few Ukrainian heroes were actually causing Moscow a lot of distress. Thousands of Russian soldiers who were desperately needed elsewhere were stuck in Mariupol. And not only that, they were also losing a significant amount of troops each day. The Russians were constantly shelling as of style with everything they could, even using thermobaric bombs. But the Ukrainians simply wouldn't surrender. And not only that, but they kept sneaking out of the plant and destroying Russian tanks, trucks and whatnot. Soon though, Russian assaults on the steel plant would commence again, and the Ukrainians would continue to beat them back. Moscow was getting more and more desperate. On April 30th, the Russians agreed to begin letting civilians evacuate. And on the 7th of May, the Ukrainian government announced that the remaining women, children and elderly had been evacuated. The soldiers, however, had to continue the fight. The Russians would not even let the seriously wounded evacuate. The remaining Ukrainian soldiers had held off the Russian army for a month now, and they were starting to suffer a lot of wounded. But not only that, they were also quickly running out of ammunition and other supplies. Remember, they were surrounded hundreds of kilometers behind enemy lines. Then on May 16th, the Ukrainian general staff announced that the Mariupol garrison had fulfilled their mission and that their new order was to save their lives. A surrender was negotiated on the white flag and over the following days, the remaining heroes of Mariupol were taken prisoner by the invaders. For months, they had held off the bulk of the Russian army, outnumbered and outgunned. Because of them, Russian soldiers who were desperately needed elsewhere, including around Kyiv, were stuck. So few are owed so much. If they hadn't sacrificed everything, there's a good chance that other Ukrainian cities would have been overrun by the Russians. The fate of the entire nation depended on them, and they delivered. They are heroes, not only Ukrainian heroes, but European heroes. This story doesn't have a good ending, unfortunately. Mariupol is now temporarily occupied by the enemy. The city that before the war was known as the Pearl of the Black Sea, with a population of 400,000 people, lies in ruins, and more than 22,000 innocent civilians are dead. And the fate of the 2400 heroes of Azovstal is unknown. The Russians are seriously talking about executing them. It is absolutely horrendous. It would constitute an enormous war crime if they did. But as we have all seen, the Russians are extremely capable and willing of committing war crimes in Ukraine. During the Battle of Mariupol, more than 4,000 Ukrainian soldiers fell while defending their homeland. The Russians lost more than 6,000 invading troops. For now, the ruins of Mariupol rest silently, showing Russia's contribution to the rest of the world. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please stay a moment. If you're watching this on Reddit, I would be very grateful if you would go down into the comment section, find the link to the video on YouTube and go there and give the video a like, leave a comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Right now the YouTube algorithm isn't really recommending my videos to anyone and likes, comment and subscribers really helps me a lot with that. So if you have 20 seconds, I would be very grateful. Thank you.